Jacob Kwao Wilson Se was born in Ghana in the Fanti land and was a farmer, philanthropist, nationalist and the first recorded multi-billionaire in the Gold Coast, which is present-day Ghana. He had and he played a major role in the Aborigines Rights Protection Society, which was established to oppose the 1896 Crown's Land Bill and the 1897 Lands Bill that threatened the traditional land tenure system in Ghana. That was the Gold Coast. Now to his early life. Jacob Wusense was born on 10th March 1832 in a fishing village in Cape Coast, which was the gold, which was the capital of the then Gold Coast, now referred to as Ghana. Now history has it that he was a humble child with a neglected background. From many rectifiable sources, Jacob started as a farmer with a capital that was given to him by his mother of about seven pounds, which he bought a piece of land and started his farming occupation in Birwa. Due to extreme poverty, his illiterate parents were unable to afford formal education, forcing Jacob Wilson say to join his father's carpentry workshop as an apprentice in addition to his farming business. To supplement his income, Jacob went into palm wine tapping and oil palm manufacturing trade. Later in his life, Jacob mastered the art of making coffin and was a well-known coffin vendor. His business flourished and it became a well-known center for making coffins which suited customer preferences. His acquisition of wealth. Jacob's acquisition of wealth is however a mysterious one and according to historical narratives, Say acquired his wealth in a manner that looked like a fairy tale in an African fairy tale story. According to Jacob Wilson Say, in one, it was one day in search of high quality palm nut fruit. Say went to his farm between Esefwa and Ejefwa one moon night at the quarter to one in the morning when the entire village was asleep. Being a stout Methodist, he usually sang hymns on his way to the farm, but he only murmured a short player prayer when he was moving to the farm on that day. Immediately he got to the farm, he started climbing one of the palm trees when he saw a snake that was coiled around the tree. In an attempt to escape the snake, he started to run away and hit his leg to a stone, which made him fall, fall, which made him fall unconscious. In that unconscious state, the voice of an apparition commanded him to wake up and go in peace and therefore show love and kindness to the needy. When he woke up, he chanced on a shiny item in the dark and it approached and he approached it apprentice and he approached it apprentice only to discover that all of the items that were shining were gold nuggets nearby these gold nuggets were other pots of gold which were close to these nuggets he took this he took this treasure that he had found and quickly went home before sunrise now it is estimated that the large quantity of gold is equivalent to about 200 billion dollars today his newfound wealth made say a celebrity overnight his role in the rights protection of citizens freedom through the aborigines rights protection society jacob wilson say co-founded and then became the first president of the aborigines rights protection society formed to campaign and voice out an opposition to the 1987-1897 Lands Bill being considered by the British colonial government. Prominent members of this group were the upper class, western educated, wealthy elites who were comfortable 
with the indigenous roots. This included J.W. DeGraft Johnson, J.P. Brown, J.E. Cassie Hayford, and, and John Mainsasaba. On behalf of the people of Gold Coast, Jacob led the delegation of the society to present a petition to Queen Victoria to abrogate the bill. Say fully founded, funded the entire cost of their trip to London, including hiring of a ship, which was known as the Alba. The team also returned with a gift of the Queen's bust that was later inaugurated at the Cape Coast Victoria Park by Princess Anne, a granddaughter of Queen Victoria during an official visit in 1925. Say upon his return, encouraged the thieves who had signed the petition to donate land for the establishment of other Victoria parks in other parts of the Gold Coast. His philanthropic works. After a successful mission with the Aborigines Rights Protection Society, Jacob Wilson Say dedicated the rest of his life to philanthropic works to help improve the lives of citizens and individuals within Cape Coast and other, other of the central region of the Gold Coast. With the help of other colonial civil servants and fellow ARPS members like John Mensa Saba, Say lobbied and negotiated with the colonial administration for a railway project at the Cape Coast to enhance trade and commerce within the region. Jacob Wilson Say and John Mensasaba injected personal cash to stimulate the growth of cocoa and palm oil farming, but were ultimately unsuccessful in meeting the set conditions which would have re been required by the government. He also funded the efforts to bring back native chiefs in exile, especially Elminus Kobinajan and Asantehene Prempe I from distant lands such as Seychelles. Se also built a model of the palm wine port at the city center, a homage to his early beginnings and the connection of his acquisition of wealth. He also supported the Methodist Church financially through the renovation of church buildings, funding of chorister ropes, purchase of hymn books, and church organs. He also single-handedly opted to pay for the remuneration of church missionaries and ministers, including pastors. Additionally, he performed similar acts of benevolence to other Christian denomination in denominations in the Cape Coast. Say was a devoted Christian who supported all Christian works and endeavors. His great act of benevolence was greatly spoken of by the church in Gold Coast, which is present-day Ghana. His personal life. He was married to Charlotte, Agnes, Amber, Commissar Moore. She was a lifelong Methodist and a regular church goer. He was also known to have held prayer meetings in his home, signifying his belief in God and a supernatural being who was the source of his wealth, his debt and legacy. Jacob Wilson Say died in his 70th year in his home at Cape Coast on the 22nd of May 1902. His remains was buried next to his wife's grave at a cemetery near the Cape Coast Town Hall. Jacob's legacy is one which is worth emulating by all individuals all over the world. Now this was the story of the mysterious Ghanaian pioneer to have ever risen from Ghana, specifically in West Africa. Please don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to like and don't forget to share this video. Join us on another episode as we share on great individuals who have done great things in business, commerce and other endeavors.